I am willing to build and test Iron Lily's gothic body armor if this video gets a thousand likes. So if you want to see that built and tested, please share and like this video. And if you have predictions on how it will perform, please leave a comment because you don't get to say I told you so after the fact. Now, I've been wanting to do a review on this armor for quite a while now because whenever I see it, or versions of it, my initial response is, I could build that, and it would work. Now, overall, it's it's just typical German Gothic armor. The bits that really make it stand out is the pressed and backplate. We're being honest, it's the press plate that makes it really stand out as something quite unique. Basically a, a gothic segmented uh, press plate like that one, but it's the single lane one, but they've added an extra segmentation to it to give the aesthetic of a bust, and they've added a DPU that starts quite high up. That's the short version. <laughs> um, but, you know, I love a good rant and delving into historical examples, so really this is essentially a German Gothic armor that's been redesigned to give the impression of a more recognizably feminine aesthetic. It's referencing some kind of I'm, I think it's like a single piece swimsuit kind of aesthetic it's going for. Uh, like a bunny thing. I think there's something culturally about that in Japan. I think that's like a thing in Japan. I'm not really sure what that's about. I don't really go in for Japanese culture and anime. Um, or it's possibly referencing, I believe, the Playboy Bunnies. Um, so, again, not something I have anything to do with. It's long before my time. Um, so I don't know if they're still around, um, but they're kind of a iconic thing from, I think, the 60s? I don't know. It's essentially just reimagining a real armor to give a more feminine aesthetic. Now, you don't need to do this. You don't need to redesign an armor designed for a man to work on a female body, really. Plenty of female reenactors wear uh, reproductions of armors that were originally designed for men, but it's interesting to see armors redesigned for a different fashion. So, it's not necessary, but I'll always remember the first time I offered to make my wife a suit of armor, her first request was she wanted boobs on the breastplate, which I, yeah, I refused. <laughs> I was like, oh no, boobs on armor are cringe. Which, uh, most of the time they are, but it can be done tastefully. Um... But she was adamant that she did not want to look like a man when she's in full armor. She wanted people to see that she was a lady. You know, that makes sense and is a valid reason to want to have your aesthetics on your armor be a bit different. Now, a lot of people think about armor purely in terms of its practicality, but they completely miss the side of armor that is, it is fashion and an expressive art form, as well as being practical fighting equipment. I mean, you look at... Again, we don't even have to leave German Gothic. With the fluting, and the gilding, and all of the little file work. That's fashion and artistic expression, and it doesn't take away from the utility of the armor if we've got a female character, because we're talking fantasy, that a female character might want to express their femininity and broadcast that, that they are a woman. 
And when it's done tastefully, I actually quite like it. An example of this done really well are, are some sculptures of uh, the martyr Saint Joan of Arc that have feminized armor, even sometimes with you know, breasts on them. Um, that are done tastefully and with respect. And you know what? These these carvings, these statues are works of religious devotion. So there is no disrespect intended. So it can be done tastefully and over the years since I've made my wife's armor I've you know, as as you start looking at armor in terms of its role as fashion and art I've kind of warmed up to the idea of having, you know, a bust on armor. And honestly, I could do it and have it be completely functional. And I think that Iron Lily's bunny armor is a great example of design that would lend itself very easily to being a fully functional fantasy armor because it's not really that different to historical design. What it is essentially is a segmented gothic breastplate. The, I believe it would have uh, started as the kind with uh, a single lane uh, separating the upper and lower parts. Uh, I quite often make them with two. Uh, I have seen a I have seen a statue depicting uh, one with three lanes in between, but I've never seen a surviving example. Um, so, what Iron Lily's armor is essentially, the top half of it at least, is essentially they've taken the historical design of the segmented uh, Gothic breastplate and they've added an extra segmentation to it in a way that is suggestive of say the top of a swimsuit maybe or uh, basically giving a bust possibly with some inverted um, inverse uh, flutes to uh, you know give a bit more of the impression of cleavage or shape of the upper chest uh, I don't have an issue with the slight amount of inwards um, um, fluting because there are examples surviving of armor that essentially has inverted flutes like that. Honestly, even if those didn't exist, uh, when you've got uh, something heavily fluted, between two flutes, you've essentially got a fuller, so, you know, I'd be fine with it anyway, but uh, ones with uh, breastplates with inverted flutes on them, there are surviving examples. And I think it would be really easy to do that. There's not much added volume across the chest, um, but you know, in cross section, it's not that dissimilar to you know the curvature of a real German Gothic breastplate. Um, this one's a little bit off. Um, they've just you know added an extra s segmentation so that it gives lines that imply. Uh, more shape. We could probably squeeze a little bit of um, you know, curvature into that and you know, just to test the whole would, would boobs on a breastplate make it unusable kind of nonsense you hear. Like people have seemed to think that uh, if you uh, okay, sidetrack but alright, let's get this a little bit sidetrack. Honestly, uh, the concept of boobs on armor should really have its own video, but you know, there's some theories that bug the hell out of me that some people who have never used or made armor seem to come up with, you know, the keyboard warriors, um, kind of that. If you had, you know, boobs on a breastplate that if a sword strike would be guided into your chest and kill you. Like, how? Uh, I sent a breastplate down south so the boys at Shadow Versity could. Uh, do some you know, tests on it, and they just absolutely went nuts on that thing trying to cut through with the sword. You're not getting through it. 
a brass light with a sword. And that was on the thin end of so of and that was on the thin end of breastplates. And you know and it wasn't steel. Well it is steel, it's mild steel, but it's not hardened. It's essentially no different than a thin iron breastplate. And there's no way they were getting through that thing with a sword, no matter how many I mean and, and they just went nuts on it. So, you know, the sword's not gonna get through that. People are thinking in terms of like bullet traps on say like tank design or vehicle design, but there's a big difference to um, getting hit with a tank shell than a sword. Now, it is quite thin. If a lance or something, on the other hand, caught it, mm, yeah, but then again, a lot of breastplates were all thicker in the middle. That's the thickest part of a breastplate. So if you're like guiding like sword strikes into the thickest part of your armor, you're probably gonna be okay. Uh, the other thing that drives me nuts is when people say, oh, y you would thin the metal too much adding that to it. Um, have, you do realize that helmets are a thing, right? Seriously? And historically, when you're building a breastplate, they start off with a plate and they draw it out and thin the sides out. So they start with an initial thickness, that's the thickest it's going to be, and they just, like, get a hammer and stretch the breastplate plate out away from it until they've got the desired um, variable thickness. All you would have to do is have a bit of extra thickness before you start if you're going to dish it. But you don't have to dish it because raising is a thing. Again, how do you think people made helmets? Ugh, oh, you know, keyboard warriors, but you know what. If you think I'm wrong and it'll just crumple um, you know what, feel free to leave a comment so that when I finally get around to building this thing, if there's enough interest, you're on record. Have fun. But, okay, we're getting a bit too, um, sidetracked. You know, that's pretty typical for me. Uh, moving down this V-shaped section, this is what, this does exist, or stuff very similar to it exists Historically, it's often referred to as a DPU, protection unit, um, D protection unit. Uh, it wouldn't be a D protection unit in this context because it's meant to be a female armor. But oddly enough, when researching medieval depictions of women in armor, and yes, there are actually quite a lot of pieces of medieval art depicting women in armor. I should probably do a, a video on that too. I'd love to build some of these like fantasy armors from history of women. Like some of the stuff that they made for like Amazon armor. I'd love to have a go at building it. Especially the, the super segmented stuff. I'd love to. I really want to build one. It's, it's on the to-do list. But such right. Again. With there are actually quite a few uh, depictions of women in medieval art wearing DPUs like this. And what we mean by DPU, it's it's essentially uh, an extension to the fold of extra lanes that come down in a V shape or a, approximately a V shape uh, to protect the front of the crotch and the groin while leaving a bit more mobility at the side of the hips. Uh, and in researching for this video, looking at you know, pictures, uh, there are depictions of armors like that that really do come up super high, like above the hips for this style of protection. So, you know what? Yeah, I could probably make that work. The issue I do have with this design is the gap between the top of the uh, we we'll call it a fold or DPU. Uh, short for it. Um, that and the top of the cleats, the thigh armor. Uh, now, originally, I was thinking that maybe this could have been a uh, misunderstanding, as uh, there is a style of German Gothic armor. Uh, one of the most famous examples is an armor that belonged to Maximilian I, and it doesn't have tassets on this style. 
it seems to me they really want to exaggerate the length of the legs and the aesthetic. So it's an armor designed to really show off your legs. And it's got a super high fold and no tassets. And when this armor is displayed and other armors like it are displayed, it's quite often displayed with a gap between the fold and the top of the queen. So I was thinking maybe Iron Lily had seen all of these uh, examples from museums that all displayed this style of armor in that way and assumed that it meant that there is an actual gap there. However, if we compare that to contemporary art showing this style of armor, the crease is meant to underlap the fold, so you know, the fold overlaps over the crease and there's not really meant to be a gap there. I have looked at some of other bits of art by Iron Lily and she's got examples showing, you know, a gothic armor of this style without the gap, so I'm not sure if it was a misunderstanding or if that gap was intentional. If it was an understanding, to, like, to be honest, there's plenty of reenactors who also <laughs> have that gap on their armors. It's it's not an unreasonable whoopsie to make. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be um wouldn't be growling someone too bad over get having that issue. Um, though it would probably bug me a bit that you've got these big gaps in your femoral artery. Uh, but you know, you're not fighting for real, hopefully. Alright, so there's three main ways that I would get rid of that gap and make it more functional. Uh, the first and most obvious way to deal with it would be to you know, lengthen the fold and DPU a bit more and extend the legs up so that they overlap. Uh, you keep the overall aesthetics, uh, but we would eliminate that vulnerability. Um, Another one would be to get rid of the DPU uh, V shape and just go with a more, you know, a more typical fold and just extend it down. And the third option would be to add tassets. And I think interestingly, if we keep the uh, V shape of the DPU and we add tassets to it, then we're starting to approach the aesthetic of some of the German Gothic armors that did have tassets but then protected the front of the crotch with a articulated gothic codpiece. Yeah, gothic articulated codpieces were a thing. Alright, if you like this video or have any further questions, please leave a comment. And uh, if you want to see me actually build this uh, breastplate and test it, uh, leave a like and you know, share this around. If there's enough interest. I'll build it, make it real, and test it. Bye everyone. Peace.